Hello students! So today we are going to discuss about an overview of the tourism industry. Are you ready? Let's begin. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to define what tourism is, identify the components of a tourism system, identify the tourism impacts in economic, social, cultural, and environmental aspects, discuss the relationship between tourism and hospitality industries, and lastly, identify career opportunities in the tourism and hospitality industries. So now let us have a review of what is tourism. So as we all know, it is one of the fastest growing and largest industries in the world today. It actually contributes a lot in our economic sector. So tourism is defined by the UNWTO as social cultural and economic phenomenon that entails the movement of people to countries or places outside their usual environment for personal or business or professional purposes. So these people are called visitors. It could be a tourists or excursionists or non-residents. So when we say tourists, these are visitors who stay in the destination at least 24 hours and making an overnight stay. While when we say excursionists, these are visitors who stay in a destination for <clears throat> less than 24 hours or just making a day tour. So uh, when, when we consider cruise travelers, uh, they are actually classified as excursionists because even though they stay longer at sea, but when they visit a certain um, destination, they will just stay there for a day. So they will, not an, um, they will not make an overnight stay in a specific destination. That's why um, cruise travelers are um, considered as excursionists. Transit travelers are also not considered as tourists nor excursionists because they usually just stay in a specific um, transit destination for the purpose of transportation. So, tourism is also time-bound, which take place within 24 hours, but should not last for more than one year and should not involve receiving any form of remuneration. So, <clears throat> Um, when we say tourism, it is somehow different from migration because when we say migration, you have the intention to stay in that place or in that destination where you are going to migrate. Well, tourism is just you will be back for less than a year in your point of origin. So some activities result in tourism expenditure. So as, as we expect, when you go for a tour, of course, the tourists are expected to spend money for tourism activities. So tourism means that visitors should not be compensated while in the area visited, meaning they should not um, gain any form of money when they visit the destination. Instead, they are expected to spend money. So that is somehow kind of confusing because we have a business or professional purposes when we travel. But when you are traveling for business purpose, yes, your main purpose is to earn, but not literally that you go there physically to earn money. Because when you have business meeting, you just go there, talk about your business, and then you went there without any, um, without carrying any money from your business partner. So that is somehow different from here. So now let's move on to the components of a tourism system. So look at here in this illustration. This is Leaper's tourism system model. So a tourist uh, generating region is a place where the tourists are coming from. So, um, they will go to the destination so here tourist destination region and then they will go back to their um point of origin so this transportation here this movement here is considered as transit route so this this is actually known also as tourist movement so it involves the departing tourists and returning tourists so just remember that the tourist generation generating region is where the tourist is coming from and the tourist destination region is where the tourist is going to go so <clears throat> 
the tourist generating region is um, considered as a push factors uh, meaning there are push factors in the tourist generating region because there are these are the things that will push the tourists to visit a certain destination so these are examples of push factors so we have here the ticketing services the tour operators travel agents marketing and promotional activities and also the purpose or the motivation of the tourist why they would like to go to travel so these are the things that will push tourists to visit a certain destination so while the pool factors these are the things that will entice or encourage the tourists to visit the destination so examples here we have accommodation entertainment industry tourist attractions shopping and tourist services so meaning these are the things that attract the tourists to visit their destination so here in the transit route this involve the channels of transport and communication so that they could go to the destination and they could have access to the destination so now let's move on to the tourism impacts. So we all, we have already discussed this one in your previous course, but uh, we will have a review on this. <clears throat> so first, let us talk about the economic impacts. So as we all know, tourism contributes both positive and neg negative impacts to a destination. So what are the positive economic impacts? First is employment. So tourism provides employment to the to the local people of the destination. Uh, so since people have employment, uh, they, it could also contribute to increase in income because people could gain from their job, from from if they are going to sell souvenir items, so they could have earned revenue from that, and if they could have business, yeah. And then another thing is investment and development. So if there is a business involved in that certain destination, and if the economic situation is good in that specific destination, so investors will be motivated to invest in that place. And then, of course, if there are investments, uh, there will be taxes that will be that will be paid to the government and then these taxes will be used for further development in the destination while of course we have negative impacts so one of these is the inflation so if there is an increase in economic activities in that certain destination so we should expect higher prices in the things that we will buy so it, this will somehow affect the local residents no the, the the local community because um the ordinary prices or the cheap prices before that they buy for their basic needs for example if they are going to buy um fishes so because of um higher demands now because of the influx of tourists so the the prices of the fishes will become higher than the previous prices because of the law of demand and supply because if there are lots of tourists in the destination the demand will also increase another thing is the economic instability so economic instability means that since tourism is seasonal so there will be time that uh, peak season and lean season so if it is peak season so we will be expecting um more income but when lean season comes there will be lower income so the, the economic the economy will be um, unstable so now let's move on to the social cultural impacts so the positive uh, social cultural impact by the way social cultural impacts involved the effects of tourism on the society as well as their culture so um, the, the positive impacts in the <clears throat> society and culture number one is improvement in the standards of living and better educational opportunities so as we all know, when uh, we when there is an increase in tourism activities in a destination, uh, people will be given employment, 
they will be given jobs they will earn income and when they have income of course it will improve their standard of living or their social status and aside from that they will also have a better opportunity for education because um increase in tourism activities also means that um, the, the local manpower will also be developed through education and training. Another positive impact is increased in knowledge and appreciation of other cultures because when there is tourism, there will be exchange in cultures. So the, the host country will now have an awareness or understand the visitor's culture and as well, the visitors will understand the local culture. While also there, it has a negative uh, social cultural impacts. Number one is the social crimes. It could be in a form of rape, extortion, um, theft, um, hostage, killing. That those those criminal activities that could be related to the influx of tourists, especially. Um, prostitution because this is common in tourism industry another thing is loss of innate culture um, especially in the younger generations because if they tend to see more of the foreign culture and of course especially here in the philippines we can easily adapt to the culture of our visitors so it could lead to the loss of our innate culture and sometimes we forget our own tradition and our own practices because we tried to copy the tradition and practices of other culture another thing is employment distortion or underemployment this is actually common in tourism industry um because you know turnover rate is also common or high in our industry because um you know since we all know that tourism is seasonal and in some cases, there, there are people who have higher educational qualification, but they are hired in a position that they are overqualified. For example, um, one person is a college degree holder or a bachelor's degree holder, but instead of having a management uh, position job, or in a supervisory level job, that person is hired as a server. So meaning that person is really overqualified because um, that person is a bachelor's degree or a degree holder, but he is just hired as a server because there is no any other available job position. So that is common in our industry. Lastly, is over-dependence on tourism. So, there are destinations that are actually dependent on tourism activities such as Boracay because um, they, they have experienced a lot of benefits from tourism and with that, they are becoming over-dependent on tourism activities and they do not have any other alternative um, generating income <laughs> activities. So, no. so when the lean season comes, um, there will be a tendency that they will have an income in the destination. Next is the environmental impact. So this is uh, the most controversial um, effects of tourism. So first is we have the positive environmental impacts. Um, awareness for preservation and conservation that's a good thing that's a good thing for tourism because um we are being aware for preservation and conservation of the destination because our main asset in tourism is our natural resources so if, if we are not going to take care of them then we will not be having a tourist product that we could offer to our market. Another thing is the provision of infrastructures. So, um, since there is an increase in the tourism activities, the, the government will tend to provide more infrastructures in the destination, in the destination, especially in rural areas. So that could be a positive, um, environmental effect. 
by the way when we say environment this does not only involve the flora and fauna but even the people living in the destination and the the their environment their physical environment so now let's move on to the negative environmental impacts. So as we can see, congestion uh, can create a negative impact in a destination, overcrowding, because um, <clears throat> in tourism, we must maintain the carrying capacity to avoid destruction of our wildlife and natural habitats. Pollution in the form of air, water, um visual and noise pollution accumulation of garbage of course from our tourists especially those that are not responsible enough damage to natural landscapes and intrusion to natural habitats and wildlife so now let's proceed to the relationship of tourism and hospitality industries so um commonly we can interchange the concept of tourism and hospitality. But, guys, take note that let's see tourism in the bigger picture. Tourism actually is bigger than hospitality. Why? Because tourism involves all the activities of the tourists, even from the conceptualization itself of the, their motivation to travel to the destination until their last moment that we go back to their point of origin. So hospitality is just part of tourism. So the large sector in tourism is hospitality. So hospitality provides accommodation, food and beverage to our um, tourists. So now let's move on to the career opportunities in the tourism and hospitality industry. So I'm sure um, when you graduate, you are very excited on what kind of job you will be having after you graduate in this program. So what could be your job? So we have different sectors involved in tourism industry. That's why it's very broad and you can go in any sector that you would like to have as long as you have the skills and the talents that are needed in our industry. So first, let's go to the transportation sector. So these are the available jobs that you could have. Like you can be a reservation agent, ticketing agent, sales agent, so on and so forth. If you would also like to have a job in the airline, you can be a, a customer service agent, counter agent, flight crew, gate agent, so on and so forth. For the travel agency and tour operator, so these are the available jobs that you could have. So you can be a travel consultant, reservations agent, ticketing agent, uh, documentation so documentation here beats the visa and other necessary travel documents when you when you visit a certain destination examples of here are the birth certificate passport uh, and visa you could also become a tour guide or tour escort so what are the differences of the two so Tour escort just usually go or escort the guests during the tour and assist them while the tour guides provide interpretation or information about the destination. But sometimes they are just interchanged because they have almost the same functions. For accommodation sector, you can have all of these job opportunities. So if you want to be in the front office or in the front of the house job, you can have these career opportunities. For housekeeping, you could be a housekeeping staff. Um, for the kitchen, you can be a chef. For the restaurant, you can be a, a server. You can also be a bar staff, bartender, or barista. In tourism management, these are the available jobs that you could have. Actually, these are more on the management level jobs or administrative level jobs. So it includes tourism destination management, tourism attraction management, tourism policy creation. So usually these are performed by the government sector. And 
Lastly, you may also have career opportunity in the government sector, especially in the Department of Tourism. If you would like to be a tourism officer, um, tourism attaché, if you want to work abroad, you can be a foreign tourism attaché or foreign tourism officer. So you could have all those jobs. But um, those higher level jobs requires experience and um, educational qualification. So if you would like to work in higher level positions in the future in the hospitality and tourism industry, you need to acquire a lot of skills and knowledge and of course you need to have longer experience in our industry be before you could be hired in higher level positions all right so that will be the end of our discussion if you have questions you may raise it during our consultation see you